What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what hiring managers are actually looking for. Now we're gonna be covering a lot in this video, basically the entire interview process, but mostly from the hiring manager's perspective. Back when I was an analytics manager, I was the hiring manager myself, but even before that, I was on a hiring team. And so I was the one who conducted the technical interview. So I was actually, you know, asking the person, you know, here's some questions on SQL, tell us what you know, kind of digging in to see if their technical skills were good enough to be on our team. All that being said, I have a pretty good understanding of how this entire process works, and I wanna share with you from a hiring manager's perspective exactly what they're looking for. So let's start at the very beginning of the process when a candidate sends in their resume to try to get a job. Now to give you a little bit of context to how this works before I get into what a hiring manager is looking for, usually a larger company or even a mid-sized company is gonna use a recruiting service in order to filter through a lot of those jobs. Now it doesn't happen everywhere. I used to work for a nonprofit where we did not do that. We would just actually sift through all the resumes ourselves. But for most of these companies, they are using a recruiting service that uses some type of automated system to filter through a lot of these resumes and applications that they get just to make sure that they have the basic requirements of what they're looking for. That just means that they scan your resume, they look for specific keywords or parameters that the client or the hiring manager is looking for. If you have that, you go into the next stage. And if you don't, they usually just kick your resume out. So what are some of these keywords and parameters that hiring managers are looking for? Well, it's gonna be very dependent on the actual job itself. A really big tip to you is to go and look at the job description, see exactly what they're wanting. Are they wanting SQL, Excel, Power BI, some cloud platform, you know, what is it that they want? And so those are typically the things that they're gonna be searching for when they actually scan that resume. Now, up till now, a hiring manager typically has not looked at your resume and they also have not talked to you yet. So you've just applied, it's kind of scanned through, you've gone on to the next round with your actual just resume or application. And now most likely a recruiter is going to call you to do a vetting process. When I was a hiring manager and working with a recruiting company, I would tell them exactly what I need for a minimum qualification. And typically that's what the recruiter is gonna ask you. They're gonna say, okay, do you at least have some experience in this domain? Do you know SQL? Do you know this or that? And then if you do know those things, then they're gonna send your resume over to the hiring manager. Now I know this whole video is what a hiring manager is looking for, and I'm gonna to get to a ton of that in just a little bit, but to give you a little bit more context about you know, the application process, the recruiting call is actually pretty important. The recruiter usually works directly with the hiring manager, so there is some type of relationship there. And if the recruiter gets a really good feeling or vibe from a certain applicant, they're gonna tell that to the hiring manager. So knowing what that recruiter is gonna ask and what they're looking for is really important because that may get back to the hiring manager as well. So with that first call with the recruiter, they're gonna do many things. The first thing is they're just gonna tell you about the position, they're gonna explain more about it and just make sure that that is what you're looking for. Otherwise, they don't wanna waste the next 30 minutes talking to you more about a position that isn't a good fit for you in the first place. Then they're gonna ask you more about your qualifications and your experience and typically they'll have your resume right there in front of them and they'll say, I see that you work for this company now, can you tell me more about that? This is when they're kind of trying to dig in just a little bit more. Is this person actually a good fit? Do they have the experience that we're looking for? Does this person have the bare minimum requirements that my client or the hiring manager wants? And then lastly, they may also ask you some questions about what kind of culture you like. Do you like a fast paced environment? Do you like working from home? Do you mind being in person? You know, these types of things that are pretty important for you. And so that's the time for you to say, no, I don't mind working in person or nope, I absolutely want a remote position. These are the things that you should talk to the recruiter about because if you want a fully remote position and this job is only in person, that's not gonna be a good fit. And so again, they're just trying to vet you out, make sure that you're a good fit overall for all the things that the hiring manager wants. Now, if you pass all these things, that's when they're gonna hand your resume off to the hiring manager, give them some feedback and some initial thoughts from that initial call, and then they can determine if they wanna bring you in for an interview. So now we're gonna really dig into what the hiring manager themselves are looking for. And this is when they actually have your resume in hand or on a computer and they can look at it. So what do they actually want to see? Now it is dependent on the level of role they are hiring for. Is it an entry level job, a mid-level senior or lead? It's very dependent because if it's just an entry level job, typically they're just looking for a few key skills and they're not looking for a lot of experience. You could be right out of college even. But if they're hiring for a mid or a senior level role, they're gonna be looking for at least two years of experience or more, and then a few years of experience in that domain that they have. 
So for the sake of being very specific and not talking in generalities, I wanna pretend that I'm the hiring manager and I have your resume in front of me and you've taken my data analyst bootcamp. So you have all the skills in the bootcamp and you don't have any experience. And I'm hiring for an entry level role as a data analyst at our company. Now our company or our fake company, we use SQL, we use Azure, we use Databricks, we use a little bit of Power BI, but we have other roles that use it more. And then we use Excel. So a lot of Microsoft applications, as well as a few others like Python and a few other things. Now we've put all of these things in the job description. So we want somebody who has all of these things, but realistically, we understand that not everybody's gonna have all of them. The ones that are really important for us is somebody who has really good SQL experience, who just understands databases, and then someone who's really good at Excel. For all those other skills, most likely we'll just train them because things like Azure, most beginner level people won't have used. So when I'm looking at your resume, I'm also looking at seven to 10 other resumes, determining which ones I wanna bring in for in-person or over the phone interviews. So when I'm looking at your resume, I'm looking for just the key characteristics of what I'm looking for before I bring you in. So I'm gonna take a look at this resume. I'm gonna say, okay, yep, looks like they have experience in SQL. Looks like they have some Python knowledge. That's great. Oh, Tableau project, that's really cool. They don't have any experience, but they did some internships and that makes sense because they just graduated college. And it looks like they have some projects and a portfolio. All of those things looked really good. I got good feedback from the recruiter. So we're gonna bring that person in and I'm gonna to talk to them myself. Now that was just for an entry level role and they might also look for a specific degree as well. So if you're in healthcare, they might want somebody who has a healthcare background. So those are some things to just be you know, aware of. But that was just for an entry level role. What about a mid-level or a senior level role? Well, what I will say is that typically they're gonna be a little bit more difficult on those resumes. They're gonna really look at them and say, okay, do they have domain experience in this domain? Do they have at least three to five years experience in this skill? This is because they don't wanna hire an entry level analyst or the skills of an entry level analyst when they need a senior level analyst. It's completely different. So that's mainly what they're gonna look at in your resume. They just wanna make sure that you have the experience that you need, if any, and that you have the skills that they need as well. Let's say you have most of what the hiring manager is looking for. The hiring manager is gonna tell the recruiter, they're gonna say, hey, I really like this person, I wanna get them in for an interview. Can you schedule a call? Here's my schedule, You know, just book the 30 minute slot anytime that I have 30 minutes available. Up until now, it's been mostly about hard skills and experience. But the in-person interviews, the hiring manager is gonna look a lot at these soft skills as well. Now the hiring manager is typically gonna bring in anywhere from three to five applicants, and is just gonna talk with them, get to know a little bit more about them, assess their experience, their skills, and just kind of talk them through with these things, as well as let them know a lot more about the position and a little bit more about what their company has to offer. Now, one thing I wanna note is that the recruiter call is actually really similar typically to the actual call with the hiring manager because remember the hiring manager was talking with the recruiter saying, here's what I want you to ask, here's what I want you to vet for. So if the recruiter was asking about a specific skill or experience, maybe you want to research that a little bit before you actually talk with the hiring manager. Now the hiring manager, of course, is gonna ask you more about your skills, your experience, the things that you know, you're brought in to do, but they're also gonna be assessing your personal skills, if you have a good personality, you know, because they're gonna be working with you. That's important, that was really important to me. I personally did not like working with kind of negative people or super boring people. I typically liked more outgoing, happy people. Those are the people that I gravitated to when I was doing the interviews. I was like, okay, this person I really vibe with, they have the skills we're looking for, they may not have all the skills that that person had, but that person was a killjoy. Like I would never want to work with that person. So like in complete honesty, that's how I looked at it. And I've talked with a ton of other hiring managers as well. And they have said very similar things. Now, in some instances, the hiring manager themselves might be a killjoy or a Debbie Downer or whatever you want to say. They may not be a fun person to work with. So the hiring manager might not care at all about your personality. They just want to know if you have the skills to do the job and, you know, that happens. Uh, I've been in interviews like that where I was the interviewee and I was like, this job sounds terrible and I don't wanna work here. Uh, and so that really does happen. But from a hiring manager's perspective, they really are looking for you know what they want. They're looking for the skills, they're looking for the personality, they're looking for a good fit for their team. One other thing that a hiring manager is gonna look for either conscious or subconscious is somebody who's motivated, somebody who really wants to come in and learn and work hard. Um, and you know, they want to have fun. They want to enjoy the job and whether that's fair or not, that is just the truth, right? 
You could be in a data analyst position where it's the most boring job in the world and they still want to hear that you're motivated to do the job. It could be like a terrible company or a boring company or whatever. They just want to know that, you know, you're excited for this position. That makes a big difference. I know for myself, I tended to gravitate towards those, you know, applicants who are really excited to work for this job. And yes, I know that, you know, you work to make money. I'm aware of that, you're aware of that, but I wanted to work with somebody who was happy to be around, who was a joy to be around. And, you know, maybe that was a little bit selfish on my part, but again, that's what a lot of hiring managers do. They tend to gravitate towards the people who are a lot more motivated. And even if one applicant has less technical skills, but has a really good personality, a really good drive and ambition to be in that job, they may choose that person over somebody who has more technical skills based off their personality or based off of you know how motivated they are. Those things do play a big part. That's where those soft skills are really, really important. And actually, I was just checking my notes. There's one other thing I wanted to mention, which is, you know, typically if you make it to the hiring manager round, they want to make sure you actually know a little bit about that company. I have been in interviews where I knew nothing about that company and they're like, hey, so what do you know about the company? I was like, you guys do uh, healthcare stuff, right? And they're like, yes. Do you know anything else about us? And I didn't, and it was horrible. And I really quickly learned that I needed to kind of research that company beforehand. So don't be like me early on in my career. You need to research the company. Just learn a little bit about what they do, what kind of data they might work with, what domain they're in. As a hiring manager, that is a really good sign. It's saying, okay, this person is really interested in this job because they're looking up their company. They're seeing what they do. And I'm also looking to see, are you asking questions about the company? Are you asking questions about what we do, how we do things? All goes back to just personality fit, motivation, a lot of those soft skills. I think personally that the soft skills play a much bigger part in the actual hiring process than the hard skills do. Of course, those hard skills are super, super important, but when you get to the hiring manager stage, they already know that you have the hard skills. That's not a big deal anymore. Now they're really seeing, are you a good fit? After that, you may have one or two other interviews and the hiring manager may be there or not, but that is what the hiring manager is looking for. So don't go into your interviews like completely blank, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to expect. In this video, I've kind of broken down everything that you should be looking for and thinking about before you actually get into that interview. So just to recap really fast, on your resume, you need to have some keywords that are in that job description because they're gonna go through that automated process. You need to have a really good call with the recruiter. Make sure it's a good fit, but also you know, really try to sell yourself in that recruiter call because they're gonna talk with the hiring manager most likely. The hiring manager is really gonna be focused on do they have the right skills that we're looking for? Do they have the experience and domain knowledge that we're looking for? Then when you get into the interview, it's a lot of soft skills. They already know that you have a lot of the hard skills that they're looking for. Although so sometimes there could be some miscommunication between the resume and what you actually meant and they can kind of vet that out themselves. But most of the time they're looking for a really good fit with skills, experience and those soft skills and culture fit. Applying and going through that interview process is really difficult. I've been through it way too many times. So I know how hard it is, but I hope that these things can really help you prepare and be really ready for your next interview so that you can just nail it and you can really do super well. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.